approved. So thank you and um, those of you that have joined us and those of you that are, that are logged in. Um, so the content today is going to be presented to you by Nicola Howard, um, who's Senior Account Manager at the recently launched Silver Bean Australia. Um, so they focus um, purely on partnership services and building value for advertisers through the customer journey um, in a measured and accountable way. Um, and Nick has managed um, global strategies for brands across the UK, US, uh, France, Germany um, and Australia with a focus on delivering value um, and myself Sophie Metcalf I'm the client services director for um, Commission Factory so they're the largest homegrown Australian affiliate network and, and I've worked in digital for about 13 years um, in affiliates for 12 and network side for about 10 of those so um, lots of experience um, for uh, the panel today. So just before we begin, um, we're just going to run through a few housekeeping elements. <coughs> so there is a Q&A functionality. Um, it will be running throughout, but we'll be taking the questions at the end. Um, so the, the question functionality is, as you can see in the screen grab um, below. So um, any unanswered questions, um, firstly, I apologize that we don't get to them in this session, but um, myself and Nick can um, also uh, deal with anything directly so we'll make sure that our email addresses are made available after um, the webinar and, and we will kind of get to them. Um, the webinar has been recorded so we'll also make the full presentation available post um, webinar so we'll get that content circulated to you as soon as possible anybody that's registered um, or sort of there about 24 hours ish and can I just quickly check um, that everybody can hear it, our dulcet tones. Um, and if I can ask you to just uh, use the raise hand functionality again, it's as per the screen grab at the bottom. Um, perfect, I can see people raising their hands. Wonderful. It's looking like um, everybody can hear us. So, um, just from a formatting point of view, um, we're aiming for roughly 30 minutes of content and then about five to 10 minutes of QA. Um, at the end, give or take. Um, and then just finally, um, you can find, there are obviously going to be statistical references um, sort of throughout. You can find those references in some of the final slides, which we obviously won't present to you, but we will make available um, post uh, webinar. Uh, so um, to kick things off, we're going to run a big poll um, just to see who has started planning uh, and to see who's going to be honest um, about whether they've started planning or not. Uh, so it, I'm going to use the raise hand functionality just now. Um, so if you can just raise your hand if you have started planning, um, that will be up. Sorry, if you could vote in our poll um, if you have started planning. So I'm launching the poll now and let's see who's honest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's definitely some people that have, which is brill, but yeah. um, there's people that haven't as well. So that does mean that hopefully this is going to be useful for people. So um, I, yeah, um, without kind of too much further ado, I'm going to hand over to Nicola, who can crack on with main content. Perfect. Thanks, Sophie. Um, I just want to thank everybody for joining us today as we look to um, discuss the importance of planning and implementing a strategic affiliate campaign. Um, today we're going to be going through the key stages and the different tasks associated with the planning, strategy and activity on the day. And then finally, how you can ensure you are capturing the right metrics and what the results mean for your business. So let's get started. Um, so we all know that the origins of Black Friday started in the US as a campaign geared up to get shoppers um, in store to increase their spending in the run up to Christmas. We may have all seen the footage on the screen now of the chaos that shoppers experienced in store in recent years. Thankfully, Australia hasn't reached this level of chaos as the US and UK have in this scene. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> it could be close though. <laughs> so following Black Friday, Cyber Monday was originally the online equivalent of this promotion. However, nowadays there's no real distinction between the two events and both occasions have grown dramatically in recent years. And as a result, globally, they are both key events in the shopping calendar, which cannot be missed by retailers. And although the actual date of Black Friday can change every year, it still falls on the Friday after the US national holiday, Thanksgiving, 
So this year, Black Friday is Friday the 29th of November and Cyber Monday is Monday the 2nd of December with promotions covering this four day period. So um, we made a few predictions last year just regarding sort of Black Friday in Australia um, and we, we anticipated that there would be obviously growth um, and that would be powered by a lot more local retailer participation. Um, which I can safely say was right, um, just in accordance to the network statistics that we have. So we saw an 83% um, jump in transaction volume year on year. We saw a 92% increase in commission um, paid out to publishers, and then also 118% in sales revenue um, year on year. So um, yeah, we, those, those predictions definitely did ring true. And they're also backed up by just general e-commerce statistics. So um, it, the sales were recorded um, the highest online retail ter turnover to date, um, according to the Australia um, Bureau of Statistics. Um, so that was for Black Friday. Uh, so not just the network statistics, but also uh, national e-commerce statistics sort of uh, prove basically our, our uh, predictions. So because we anticipate that 2019 is going to be bigger than ever before, it's extremely important that retailers get organized well in advance to ensure that they are participating in this lucrative promotion. I know that it does sound a little bit early to start talking about um, November with it being only August, but <laughs> it's really, really key um, that actually the strategy is defined now and it, like, solid timelines established so that everything else can stem from that. Yeah. So we've constructed a timeline to give you a breakdown of the steps which might be included in your preparation. Um, and this is just a guide for when you should be looking to carry out certain tasks associated in each phase. We go into a lot more detail throughout the webinar, so this is just a top level summary. So in August and early September, you should really be looking to plan your strategy and agree on any targets and budgets available. In September and early October, you should be reaching out to your key publishers to discuss and book opportunities to work together in order to elevate your campaign messages. For October, you would also, if you're looking to work with content publishers or influencers, um, you need to ensure that you're giving them plenty of time to create any content which is needed to promote the brand and your Black Friday promotions. And also, if you're implementing a gifting strategy as part of your campaign, you will look to dispatch your products in October. For November, in the run-up to the campaign going live, you should use this time to update the details in the network and ensure that any commission increases are set up correctly and tenancy fees have been processed through the network. I think just from, from a network perspective, one of the most useful tools for sure when we're planning for our clients is um, last year's plans. So definitely dig those out and just use them as a starting point to see what can be replicated um, or replicated but with minor tweaks to kind of make optimizations. Yeah. So um, planning is the first step in the process and it's an extremely important phase as it builds the foundations for the entire campaign. Um, therefore, we recommend that you carry out some year-on-year -year analysis. Um, some key areas that you could focus on for this could be what offers were available, what were your top performing products or SKUs, and also what was the total revenue generated throughout the campaign. Acknowledge anomalies as well. So um, anything that you feel maybe shouldn't be just in reference to sort of wider market considerations, any anomalies that maybe affected your results that you shouldn't be considering in last year's um, success. Um, so it might be that um, something sold out spontaneously because of some unexpected positive PR um, from an influencer or something like that. So don't account for something that's unlikely to occur again and just be mindful of anything that might have skewed results and, and therefore subsequently cause you to start planning um, more inaccurately. Yeah. Um, so following on from this, you should also carry out specific partnership analysis. Uh, areas that you can focus on for this could be who were your top performing partners, what exposures and commission increases were implemented and with which partners, and what was the overall channel ROI. Finally, some more crucial information that you should be aware of is what your competitors or resellers have to offer. Um, it's important to know this so that you can able to remain competitive. In order to do this, we would anticipate that you're um, monitoring their offerings throughout the year just to get a better idea of what type of promotions they might have available. At Silverbean, we monitor competitor analysis um, and we have a record of this to support next year's planning. 
So we would include any additional exposures that they have running or any commission increases and with which key publishers, and if so, who and what. If, for whatever reason, you don't have a record from last year, you can carry out a simple Google search in these brands to see if it detects any of their historical information. Also, networks should be able to provide specific industry insights about this promotion. Also, speak to key publishers because they can often provide brand anonymous information about what performed well and for which market. We also recommend that you sign up to competitors newsletters to help monitor activity and promotions over the sales period. All of this information will help you decide on your individual strategy, which will determine success for your brand. Um, so something also to, to bear in mind as well. Um, so uh, something else to, to bear in mind as you plan, um, it might be that you know that there's a very strong hunch um, that something might be approaching. So again, just going back to market anomalies. So for, for example, in 2017, there was obviously the, um, the hunch that Amazon might launch. So again, just trying to, sec not second guess, but trying to um, plan for um, things that you know are going to be happening that are going to be out of your control. So obviously you have your BAU um, plan, but just take into consideration those, um, those market factors that might be slightly out of your control. Yeah. Definitely. So, once the planning and research phase has been conducted, the next step is to define exactly what success for your campaign looks like and ensure that all the steps are in place to measure the metrics. So for this, you'll need to identify the primary and secondary objectives that you are looking to achieve from this campaign. This could include a number of metrics which are mentioned on the slide. However, other factors which you could consider include year-on-year -year growth and channel contribution all of which are good metrics to show the success and growth of your partnership channel. A secondary objective could also be a much softer one, which could include data capture. You could use the demand around Black Friday to build out your customer database, offer incentives to encourage news that are signups or registrations for early access to the sales or notifications. Whatever your objectives, it's important that these deliverables are all measured through the partnership channel. And if they're not, we recommend that you work with your network in advance to ensure that these are being measured correctly. Setting objectives for the campaign is important as internally with stakeholders, you are able to set the expectations of how you see the channel performing. Successful results may also help you secure additional budgets for the campaign in the future. Um, if your partnership channel is managed by an agency or network, it's important to make everyone aware so that you're all pushing for the same results and outcomes. So the next step which needs to be considered is how much budget is going to be available through the partnership channel. Um, this is a very bespoke amount to each brand um, and it's very dependent on the expectation and success you're looking to achieve. A budget can be allocated in a number of ways. One, you can specifically allocate it for the use of booking additional tenancy exposure opportunities with key publishers or a campaign, campaign budget can be calculated for the channel as a whole taking into account all of the costs associated with it and the projected revenue forecast and therefore you would calculate the ROI of the campaign. If at all you are unsure of how to do this, work with your affiliate agency or network to determine the correct budget to help you achieve your goals. Also just when you're talking budget, just consider the split of CPA and tenancy and gifting and just factor all of that into the overall cost of um, Black Friday and Cyber Weekend into your calculations and your, your ROAS calculations as well. Yeah. So um, the next step which is crucial is to get your promotional strategy agreed. Um, so this can all, the rest of your plans can be implemented following it. Uh, there are a range of different promotions that you could look to run, which include offer focus promotions such as flat, white, flat side discount wide offers um, or offers which change throughout the promotional campaign, product or category specific promotions such as buy one get one free and value added offers such as um, free delivery or free gift with purchase. These kind of offers are really good for brands that don't want a discount. Um, other things that you can consider when deciding your promotional strategy, you need to liaise with your logistics team and ensure that they're able to meet the demand. Um, publishers can also give you feedback on how strong your offer is within the market 
if you provide them with your information as soon as possible. So I guess as well, just before you get in too deep into the detail here, um, be clear on what your overarching approach is going to be. For example, we work with clients that maybe can't discount the way that others can or offer codes. So some uh, marketplaces, for example, um, but they're, they're in the same breath kind of wants to make the most of the increased online shopping traffic. Um, so gifting, and when I'm saying gifting, I mean Christmas gift to consumer um, rather than publisher gifting is more the angle. Um, and so therefore running um, pricing from messaging was kind of like the, the strategy that they take. Um, and if a heavy discounting is the approach, then obviously time and depth is going to be key and also kind of the format. So coupon versus adjusted on-site price. Um, but yeah, just kind of deciding what, what the, the sort of overarching plan of attack is going to be before you sort out the detail. Yeah. So once you've decided on your promotions, um, it's important that you make the messaging for these as clear and concise as possible to avoid any confusions by the publishers who are trying to promote the offers and for the customers who are trying to take advantage of them. So we recommend that if a brand has a number of different promotions available throughout the, the campaign period, um, or if they're going live at different times, we suggest that you create a landing page to house all of these offers so that publishers can direct all of their traffic to this one page. Um, and that means that tracking links do not need to be created and changed during the busy time period, which will limit any issues that may be experienced. It's also important that if you do create a landing page, that it's tested well in advance of it being live to the publishers. We would also recommend that for any promotion available, that the brand creates a coupon code for publishers to promote, which will allow customers to qualify for the offer available and encourage them to click through from the publisher's website so that they can be rewarded accordingly for their influence and sale. In the run-up to Black Friday, um, there's a lot of new partnership um, relationships to be formed. Um, just to make sure that you've got as much support as possible over key trading period, um, it's never been more important, I guess, to have as much um, traffic being driven through your affiliate program as, as it is, I guess, in, in November. Um, so in order to kind of encourage that, ensure that your account profile page is up to date with all the program information, as this is what publishers will obviously see when they're looking for new brands to work with. Um, that, can also include anything special that you're going to be running for Black Friday. Um, so anything you're going to be running um, that can be made public, um, increased CPA for your entire program, for example. Um, and also just when a new partner does join um, your program, particularly at this point in the year, um, reach out really quickly just to get them engaged um, and so that you can get them click and sale active as quickly as possible so that they're up and running for your basically your key trading period. Yeah, not to be missed. So um, as previously mentioned, testing is a really crucial phase of the strategy um, and it needs to be executed by the brand, not just specifically for the partnership channel. So you should look to run tests to ensure that your website's able to cope with the increased level of traffic that could potentially be visiting the website and ensure that page loading times and the checkout processes are not disrupted by this. Um, it's also important that you run tests to ensure that your program is tracking correctly and all the tags are being fired. And finally, we just mentioned it before, but you should also test any landing pages that, that have been created specifically for the campaign or promotional codes, just to ensure that there are no issues on the day. So at Silverbean, we would look to work with relevant publishers who can help us target audiences across the entire customer journey funnel. Um, so that we would have multiple touch points along the way. So the first stage is um, we would look to work with content and influencers at the motive development and research stage. At this stage, the influencers have really engaged audiences. So during Black Friday, you can use this to your advantage. Before reaching out to influencers or influencer networks, it's important that you define your framework so we recommend that you try to tier your influencers according to their potential impact that they can have and drive for your brand. We recommend that you review what a budget and resources you've allocated to, the, to them in order to support their efforts and define what measures success for their activity and ensure that the metrics are being captured. 
As long-term influencers may not always be the last touch-up point of the customer journey, with the help of the network's technology, you're also able to see the influence that these publishers have helped um, convert and assist in sales for other publisher types. We recommend that you review your communication and gifting strategy for the different tiers. The aim of it all is to use the influencer's engagement with their audience to help build hype around your brand and your promotion in the run-up to Black Friday. If it's possible, we recommend that you grant uh, influencers early access to your sale items so that they can create reviews or work with the influencers for them to create curated landing pages on the website showing their favourite pics. The example on the screen that we've included here is a collaboration between Nike and Home of Sneakers. Through close collaboration with the leading footwear influencer, Nike are able to leverage the audience to build hype around the brand and their promotions. Um, it's important that as you're relying on influencers to create content around your event, prior planning is key. So we recommend that sharing sale deals with influencers by the end of September to early October to allow them ample time to complete their uh, content. Next is the evaluation and selecting stage. So the publishers that we tend to see in this phase include review and comparison sites. At this phase, the customer is looking for product ratings, customer reviews, or different price points in order to narrow down their search. Therefore, it's really important that your brand stands out from the crowd. Some key considerations at this stage include offering commission increases. We recommend that you negotiate increased commissions for your key partners, because often when a publisher uses your product feed for the, from the partnership program, the website will use an algorithm which calculates the position of your brand and it's important that you stay in a prime position. For the product feed, you need to ensure that it's optimized for maximum reach. Some publishers can pull through promotional messages and display them alongside the products. So you need to ensure that these messages are loaded into your feed and the network. Timing is crucial. So ensure that your product feed is updated to go live at midnight with your offers as some retailers don't update their feeds until midday on Black Friday, which would mean that they've lost out on early bargain hunters. And then finally, ensure your product feed is clicking through to the correct URLs. As some sale pages won't go live until Black Friday sales have begun, this can cause issues if they're not validated and you don't want to miss out on vital traffic. I mean, so ensure that your URLs are working correctly. Community groups and forums also play an important publisher type to work with in this phase. So we recommend that you reach out and make sure that they are aware of your upcoming promotions and see if they have any exposure opportunities which might be available to you, which will put your messages directly in front of their audiences. I think just going back to Nicola's point about feeds um, and about making sure that you've got all the necessary value ads and the product messaging in the feeds, um, if you are running a on-site discount that isn't coupon based then just make sure you're including the from price in the feed you supply to the network and um, just so that that gives the most impact um, for publishers when they're displaying on their site yeah um, so moving on to the purchase phase of the customer journey funnel uh, the types of publishers that we tend to see large contributions from in this phase include loyalty charity reward cashback and coupon codes um, all of these publishers play a really crucial role in converting the customer's sale and therefore it's extremely important that you include them in your strategy and look at ways of working with them in order to get your promotions directly in front of the customers. Take into consideration which publisher has had a strong performance and conversion rate from the programme throughout the year and also specifically during the 2018 Black Friday campaign. We recommend that you speak to the various publishers and see what exposure opportunities they have available. During the campaign period, audiences will be on their websites looking for the best promotions and rewards. So website placements, banners and commission increases can all help contribute to convert and sale. Ensure you get all of your desired placements booked in well in advance as the spots available are limited and can get filled up quickly. Um, we recommend that any bespoke creatives which need to be done for individual publishers, these are created, approved and supplied in good time. It's really important to also provide creatives that are going to engage with the audiences. 
So if your publisher has audiences that speak additional languages, then we really recommend that the brand create um, campaign messaging and translate it into the local language. Finally, when you work with technology partners, um, you need to ensure that their messages are consistent and their triggers are, are operating correctly in order to engage with the customers to get them to continue shopping on your site. Um, so just make sure that all of their campaigns are updated. Definitely. And I think just because obviously with this particular group of publishers, we tend to see the most conversions. It's important. It's so important to lay down a really strong foundation of activity early and their slots will go super early and just to, to secure that volume and really make most of the engaged communities of Okay, so <clears throat> planning everything in advance puts you off on the best foot. However, once the campaigns go live, there's still a lot of work that can be done. Um, just to ensure that you're maximizing the channel's performance. So we recommend that you tier your partners according to the potential impact that they could have for you. Um, so these partnerships which provide you brand with the biggest opportunity and um, quick wins on Black Friday. So we recommend that you do a quick site sweep and just check that they're promoting your offers. Um, similar to this, we would recommend that any agreed um, increased commissions that these are being advertised, especially when it results in the customer receiving a reward because of it. We also think that you should double check and ensure that these rates have been um, set up correctly in the network. We recommend that you review how strong your offer is in the marketplace by carrying out competitor research. Um, make a note of any placements that competitors are taking place in and which publishers they're working with just for future reference um, and when you come to plan next year's campaign also. As the activity is focused on a very short time frame, it's really cru crucial that you are optimizing your performance on the day. So if a tier one partner is not contributing um, to the anticipated sales that you had forecast, review what's happening with this publisher and reach out to them. Maybe your offer doesn't stack up well against your competitors. Um, do you need to change your offer? We just we would recommend that you have a little bit flexibility so that changes can be made on the day if needs be. I think also um, just keeping an eye on any user generated content websites just because those communities are usually they're super quick to pick up on anything that's gone wrong or um, if one if something um, an offer on one of your competitors has done particularly well, it'll be picked up on these sites and these sites are usually pretty vocal about the good and the bad stuff. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so they're also a really good place um, to, to just keep your ear to the ground as to what's working and what isn't like on the day and throughout and just to Nicola's point if you have the capability to be flexible which I appreciate not everybody does um, you can maybe be reactive in line with what we know the customers are saying um, so yeah that, that definitely would kind of um, at the beginning or also just throughout keep an eye on, on these types of sites yeah. so Onto the measurements. So before the promotion, you will have agreed what results would define a successful campaign for you. Um, it's important to use the data that's available through the network to dissect and analyze the performance overall and that of the individual publishers and what exposures took place. We recommend that you measure these against the original targets and objectives which were set, but also against your previous year's performance, just to see how much you have grown and how much success you have achieved. So Commission Factory offer a number of granular reports that can help you review success, um, including um, new and existing <coughs> customer sales, new and existing customer ROAS, um, which publishers introduced, influenced and, and closed sales. So we've talked about the different types of publishers that we would work with throughout the customer journey. So just getting a bit more visibility on the success of that. Um, voucher codes used, um, the device split, and also what types of publishers have been driving those sales for you. Um, so again, just we've referred to it before just taking into account anomalies and that sort of thing and, and wider market um, influences so again just make sure that when you're reviewing results and um, take into account and omit anything that is going to skew anything um, and obviously you don't want to take those forward to the planning stage for next year and um, also look at anything that didn't go particularly well because I know obviously that's not 100% positive but um, it can be something that obviously you can swerve for next year and 
um, just put in the bank of learnings and make sure that those mistakes, if it was mistake related, um, aren't re replicated next year. Yeah. Um, and obviously just document everything. And that's really important, I think. So <laughs> I'm in the summary. So I appreciate that was a lot of information and detail to take in. So we just want to do a top level summary of the key phases of creating a successful Black Friday campaign. So for planning, it's important to be prepared and organized in advance. Um, we recommend taking learnings from previous performance, analyze your competition's offerings, and define exactly what you think success looks like in terms of the metrics that can be measured. Agree a budget for the campaign and ensure all activity aligns within this. For the strategy, Decide what offers you have available and what time. Build new publisher relationships and utilize existing relationships with your key publishers across the entire customer journey funnel to ensure that you maximize your campaign's performance whilst being aware of the budgets available and the contribution towards the objectives. And then finally, for the measurements, review the campaign performance and measure the success against the original targets and objectives set. Take learnings about what worked well and what didn't so you can use these insights in the future. And also, don't worry if you haven't started planning already. It's not too late, but um, yeah, hopefully this has given you some good insights as to what you need to be getting cracking on with. Definitely. <clears throat> and that brings us to the end of our uh, sort of scheduled content. And now we are going to be taking questions. So. Um, we will crack straight on with those. I'm just going to turn the video back on as well so you can see us. <laughs> um, so the first question that's come in um, asks, what sort of offers work best for fast fashion retailers? Um, so Nick, I guess, did you want to kind of take yeah, that one? Yeah, um, so that's a really good question. Um, it very much depends on the individual brand. Um, if your customers are used to you offering blanket discounts across the whole website, you need to make sure that you're going to be able to offer a, a high um, discount, which is going to stack up well against your competitors. But for brands who don't like to offer discounts, if you're going to run with a promotion, for example, a free gift with purchase, yeah. you need to ensure that it's got quite a high monetary value. Um, so the customers really think that they're getting something over and above what is your business as usual. Um, but we do appreciate that it's not always easy to predict or forecast what offers are going to work well. So if possible, um, probably internally have a few different options signed off so that if you do need to be flexible on the day and release new promotions, then you do have that as a, um, as a backup if you're not seeing the results that you need to be achieving. Definitely. And just, I guess, um, echoing Nick on competitive research beforehand and like, having a conversation with your publishers. I think different publishers are going to be um, are going to be very different and what works for one publisher won't work for another. So I think just having, especially with the sort of top 10, 15, having those conversations beforehand um, and setting out what, well, and tailoring it to um, what, what you know and what they are telling you is going to work with their audiences. Um, and again, we, we alluded to it, I guess, like in, in the slides, but just having that um, flexibility to be reactive to the market, especially in fast fashion, because obviously it's so incredibly competitive. Yeah. Um, so if you can and know that something's working for a competitor, if you're able to replicate or better that or, you know, at the time or roll something out very last minute, then obviously it just gives you um, a better chance of just stealing some last minute market share um, through the channel. Yeah. So second question that's come in, um, how do you feel about the effect of the removal of Instagram likes on the overall influence held by influencers for, for this campaign? Um, so I guess working back to how do we feel about the effect of the removal of Instagram likes um, on how influencers actually hold influence over their followers? Um, I mean, I guess there's a couple of answers for that. Um, I think obviously from a, a mental health point of view and sort of removing it slightly from affiliate marketing, it's, yeah. it's um, a positive thing from a, from a personal opinion. Yeah. I think it makes it quite difficult to then understand um, how much influence somebody has. Um, but then I guess, you know, that there are lots of um, softwares and that sort of thing that can take in to account multiple factors, not just likes on Instagram, how yeah. often they post those sorts of things as to what sort of reach and, and influence they do have. So, yeah. Um, potentially not just likes, um, 
should be considered an actual, actually multiple uh, metrics to decide whether somebody has um, a, a good amount of influence and whether they're relevant for your brand or not. Yeah, totally. And the technology available now so that influencers can track through the full journal journey. So if they do lead to a converted sale, that is seen. It's not just the kind of the brand awareness that they originally were seeking to yeah, achieve. Absolutely. Um, and those metrics are still available. They're just not for the general public to see. So you still can work with influencers and get a better understanding of how engaged their audiences are with your brand. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so we've had another one come through. Do you need to have tenancies for Black Friday? And if so, um, how much, what sort of budget should I set? So Black Friday is an extremely competitive time and there's a lot of noise going around um, with everyone's promotions and campaigns and stuff. So to cut through the noise, we would recommend that you have a budget available to take part in paid placements with key publishers. Um, just so you're ensuring that your messages and your offers are being put directly in front of engaged audiences who are seeking out the best offer. Um, we appreciate that not everybody has a budget though available for this. So we would definitely recommend that wherever possible you um, offer a commission increase um, because this is a lot low risk. Um, obviously you only pay out if it leads to a converted sale, um, but the increased commission and the increased reward that the customer might receive might just be the tipping point which gets them to convert in the sale. I do think as well, just from a budget point of view, I mean, I think on a basic level, yes, like generally you do need tenancy. Um, you don't always need lots and lots of it, but yeah. I think if you want to, if your priority is to have high profile placements, I think, you know, just generally like there is an expectation that there's a tenancy um, requirement. <coughs> I think from a, a, a factoring it into your ROAS point of view, work out where you're going to offset that. Um, maybe it's with um, another publisher's uh, sales, maybe it's that um, the CPAs decrease to kind of counter, yeah. counterbalance like the tenancy, but just figure out, I guess, what like the forecasting is versus like the spend, um, in, including the tenancy and where you might be able to offset that to make sure that you're meeting your ROI goals as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we've had another one, um, which is great. <laughs> Keep the questions coming. Do you think it is wise to lower exposure in the month um, prior to Black Friday and then go stronger around this event to avoid customers getting tired of us in your brand? Uh, personally, um, from a discounting point of view, and also, I guess, from an Australian market-specific point of view, discounting starts earlier than it does, like, in the UK and the US, doesn't it? Just yeah. purely from the fact that you've got, you have Singles Day, Click Frenzy, and then obviously Cyber Weekend. Yeah. So it's Some almost Wednesday. like after the first week of November, it's, it's continuous discounting. I don't think you should necessarily lower exposure, but I think be more tactical with the discounting and decide what your priority is going to be yeah, throughout November. Be yeah, that. absolutely, because I feel like towards the end of November, there's a bit of discount fatigue that happens in Australia, um, and potentially that's why maybe discounting around Christmas isn't as prominent, certainly from our point of view. Yeah, has it been? no, it's it's very different in Australia than it is in, say, the UK, for example, because yeah. cause of all those extra um, shopping events like Click Frenzy. Um, so it, it also depends what the the brand has for their on their marketing calendar. If you don't have any promotions, then you might want to go a little bit quiet in the, in the lead up to the Black Friday mm. because you know that it is going to be such a big time. Um, but yeah, it's just very bespoke to the brand, isn't it? Yeah, no, no, definitely. Um, and also bespoke to the market. So I mean, I feel like um, Cyber Weekend is is the big one for yeah. UK and US, and so it's kind of everybody will put everything into it. Everything in. <laughs> yeah, you have to just be a bit more um, tactical, don't you? Here, so. Um, we've had another question come in, so uh, we've got time for one more, um, so we'll wrap it up after this, but what are the common pitfalls retailers make um, over Black Friday? Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> there, there are a number of um, mistakes or issues that retailers can, can commonly experience in, in the run-up to Black Friday and actually on the day. So. The biggest one would be experiencing website issues. Yeah, um, wow, yeah. Which isn't ideal because mm. you don't want to disrupt the customer's um, transaction phase and also you don't want them experiencing a brand bad customer experience on the day because it might just be something that sends them off to a competitor or a reseller when you really want them just to convert on your website. Um, another frustration that customers tend to have is 
if a brand has a really strong offer, but they don't have large levels of stock for a particular yeah. item, if this promotion um, comes and goes quite quickly early on in the, the, either the day it goes live or in the weekend, um, customers are often frustrated. So if you do think that you're promoting a key product or you have a strong offer, just check that you have stock to, to meet the high demand that could potentially be um, looking for that. Yeah. And then finally, another one is the logistics and the fulfillment of the orders. So work with your logistics team and just make sure that any um, delivery messaging, um, if you're saying deliver next day, just that your teams are able to mm. fulfill this. Again, just so the customer doesn't have a bad shopping experience with you and comes away frustrated that like deadlines aren't on hit and things like that. Definitely. I'm going to, I'm going to say not planning um, far enough ahead, <laughs> just obviously given the topic, but like seriously, I guess success is reflective of the time um, that you put into organizing your affiliate strategy for such a key trading period yeah. and such a large proportion of sales for the year can be made um, in, in such a small space of time. So obviously planning is okay. Yeah. Um, and if you really want to work with the full spectrum of partners, then that requires a, a lot of planning. And so it's trying to, yeah, trying to book in last minute, stuff is um it, obviously it's quite stressful yeah it's, um, ideal. Yeah, it's stressful it, it's quite limiting and also you you know you can't ask a, a content partner to plan something big in yeah. um, over a key trading period if it's not been planned in like a long time in advance so that's probably what i i would say apart from all the things that nick's um just just identified so um i think that's all the questions that we've got time for but thank you everybody for submitting and, and thanks, um, that's kind of a wrap for our, our content. Um, and I just wanted to thank everybody so much for, for attending and listening. Um, hope that you found it interesting and helpful um, and that you're all, all going to now run off and start planning, <laughs> yeah, obviously. Plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, as mentioned, I'll be circulating the presentation shortly for everybody and the registered and attended. And um, I uh, hope that obviously you guys have a great day, morning, evening, or wherever you're kind of based and located. And um, mine and Nicola's contact emails will be available as well. So any kind of questions, please kind of feel free to, to whiz them over. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.